So the Earth is said to be a sphere, um, although not a perfect sphere. Um, it is proposed that it is actually a oblate spheroid. Um, and if you go to Google Images and type in oblate spheroid Earth, um, on the very first page you'll come up with four diagrams or four pictures here that all give the same value for the oblateness of the Earth. And that is that the um, the equatorial diame diameter is 12,756 kilometres and the polar diameter is 12,714 kilometres. So all of these pictures, this, this one, this one, this one and this one, they all have the same um, distances. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that that is the accepted um, size of the Earth. So with that in mind, I decided to draw an exaggerated um, cross-section of an oblate spheroid, which is an ellipse, like this. So this is um, greatly exaggerated. The, the polar distance is much smaller than the equatorial distance here. So I went ahead and drew a 45 degree line from the centre to the surface. Um, and at the surface, I drew a 100 metre tall building by 20 metres wide, but I drew it perpendicular to the ground that it's actually on. Um, so I drew a line from the intersection here, and I drew a straight line 20 metres along this um, curved line to here. So it's a straight line on top of a curved line, and then I drew perpendicular from that 100 metres upwards and created this building. Um, I then drew a line from the top of the building simulating somebody standing on the roof and um, holding a plumb bob from the top of the building um, and observing which way the plumb bob would swing um, to pull itself to the centre of this exaggerated oblate spheroid Earth. And as you can see, we zoom out the blue line here um, and the purple line, they both intersect at the centre point. So that was just to, um, to illustrate what it would look like if it was exaggerated and the sort of dynamics we're talking about here. Now this same effect would occur all the way in each quadrant of this um, oblate spheroid. So until you actually got to the pole here, or the equator here, um, the, the angle of the plumb bob would not be vertically down. It would not be perpendicular to the ground until you got to either this point on the equator, the south pole, this point on the equator or the North Pole. At any at any given latitude between these two these points, um, the the plumb bob can never point vertically down. Okay, you've probably guessed what I'm going to do next, and that is to put the exact dimensions that we're given for the Earth um, into AutoCAD as well. So this um, dimension here, which is across the equator, is the uh, is 12756, and the polar diameter is uh, 12714. So let's just verify that. Um, 12756 and 12714. So um, in AutoCAD, it's very very easy to draw this. Um, this ellipse to the exact dimensions. So I just start the ellipse command, pick a center point, which is the intersection of these two lines, pick an x axis direction, um, I pick the end point here, pick the y axis direction, pick the end point here, and it just draws this perfect, um, this perfect ellipse. Okay, so I did the same and I drew a line 45 degrees from the center all the way up to the surface. Zoom in. Okay, and I did the same thing. I drew a, I drew a line from this point here along the curve 
at 20 meters um, so another straight line on top of a curved line um, I then from that straight line drew a, a perpendicular line upwards by 100 meters and then finished the building off so this building is sitting perfectly perpendicular to the actual localized piece of ground um, that it sat on I then did the same and took a line from the very top corner of this 100 meter high building and drew it back to the center of um, the this oblate spheroid earth so they intersect in the center they are very 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 close to each other if I zoom right in you might be able to see them sort of diverging there they are a lot Let's zoom back out again and by the time they get to the building on the surface there is a distance between the plumb bob line and the building of 300 millimeters which is about a foot so I don't know about you but I was always under the impression that if you drop something it drops vertically perfectly but vertically perpendicular to the surface of the earth but our oblate spheroid earth would suggest otherwise um, and I know it's only minor it's only a little bit but I don't know over three over 100 meters we have a 300 millimeter um, discrepancy so the effect this has is that anywhere in the northern hemisphere the a plumb bob would be drawn to the north to try and align itself with the center of the earth um, then as you traveled um, to the equator it would align itself perpendicularly exactly and then as you traveled south um, the plumb bob would try and align itself um, southward to align itself with the center of the earth so we all intuitively know that um, this doesn't happen we've used spirit levels and plumb bobs um, we know how accurate they are everything everything um, falls vertically perpendicular to the surface of the earth so by what mechanism is the earth using to correct this small error since um, whatever falls to the earth perpendicular to the earth is not <clears throat> going to intersect with the center of the earth it just can't on a on a spheroid on an oblate spheroid um, anything on earth so long as it's not at the equators or the poles cannot um, intersect the center of the earth and remain perpendicular to the earth just impossible so what is happening is the is the gravitational pull deflecting as soon as it gets to the surface of the earth or um, is it a curved line is the gravity curving in towards the center I don't know I did some research some limited research into this um, I did find a phenomenon known as um, vertical deflection but this is talking about um, in the vicinity of large geological objects such as mountains or supposed pockets of denser um, material towards the inner earth affecting the way that plumb bobs behave in some areas um, but obviously that's localized to areas that have them specific conditions um, if we're talking about a um, generally flat open open area and these effects do not occur so by what means is the earth using to um, find its center point so from here on in it all goes a bit pear-shaped quite literally because if we are told that the earth is not an oblate spheroid after all it is actually slightly pear-shaped now these two pictures here are massively exaggerated even this one here is exaggerated but it talks about a flattening um, in the northern hemisphere around this edge and bulging in the southern hemisphere so around here 
and that's um, sort of analogous to a pair, um, just less exaggerated. So <clears throat> I'm not sure about you, but can anybody point to the centre of this shape? Where exactly is the geometric centre of a, a pear-shaped object? Well, the answer is there isn't one. There isn't a geometric centre. It could be anywhere. It's the centre of this point could be or will be the different different to the centre at this point. In fact, anywhere along the surface of this pear-shaped object, um, the centre is at a different point. At least with the um, oblate spheroid, no matter how pronounced, like this one, for instance, we can still find a centre point just here. So it looks like nobody can really agree or settle on the exact pear shapedness um, of the Earth. Um, I've, I've looked to see if I could find any numbers so I can actually draw it to see what's happening in the northern and the southern hemisphere but it doesn't seem like even science agrees on what the, what the exact shape is um, but needless to say um, they all agree that it is pear shaped um, and that if it was this whole problem would become even weirder so just food for thought, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, more to come soon.